in this court of record do complain of the Alameda Sheriff's Department, comma, John Past Pastor Mike Piles, Joyce Kerner, and Doe's one through ten, and then I'm going to put in brackets um, sheriff's deputies at booking just to let them know who I'm talking about for violating my right to liberty because it's a right. See, you have to sue for violations of your rights. So they violate my right to liberty and having no jurisdiction. Got to make a jurisdictional challenge here over me. When I was kidnapped, because if you were arrested, it, it, it uh, means that there was something lawful going on there. But you weren't arrested because a, a person dressed up with a badge and a gun and a uniform, just another guy, decided to forcibly take me somewhere. That's what you call kidnapping. Kid, I was kidnapped and imprisoned by the named parties. So imprisons underlined with red so it, it's a misspelling so I go up there and look at what the spelling is and put that in so the named parties who acted in collusion who acted in collusion to deny me my rights without lawful cause. I seek damages of spell it out ten thousand dollars and then in brackets or let's say in parentheses, not in brackets, because I want this to appear on the page. I'm going to put the dollar sign, $10,000. And now it's clear. It's both spelled out and put in print. From each living soul and, let's say, $100,000 dollars and then one hundred thousand dollars in parentheses from the sheriff department I should name it more exact I guess Alameda because everything is a, it's about being exact here Okay, now I'm going to show you how to flesh this out a little bit. The court likes to see everything in um, one and a half uh, spacing. So we're going to go down to f format, paragraph, and it says line spacing here. Single, one and a half lines, double lines. So we're going to go to one and a half lines, and we're going to press OK. And now you see they that everything that I highlighted has been spaced out to one and a half lines. And you'll notice that the line numbering is still on the left side of the page here. You can see where it's tight in here. That's single spacing, and then here it becomes double spacing. Right. And now I'm going to add um, things. So I'm going to put the cursor at the end of the word people over here. And then I'm going to put insert, footnote, press footnote and then it's going to insert a footnote 
and then auto number is clicked because I want it to magically auto number the footnotes. If I add a footnote in later, it'll renumber everything that I added. So I press OK. And so I'm looking at, I want the definition of people, right? So I go down here to my um, my documents and get my files and open case law codes and pleadings and go to sovereignty and open that up and then sovereignty court decisions and then I'm going to space this out to uh, text with, with so you can read it easier and then number four here at the revolution the sovereignty evolved on the people I'm going to highlight that copy it and go to my document and paste it in here and then it's in 12 point which is way too big because I want these to be readable but small so I'm going to change it to 9 point New, uh, New Times Roman right? and then you notice how the first line is higher than the second and third there's a space that's because this number is too big so I'm going to change that number which is Arial, a Unicode MS and change it to New Times Roman and 11 point and now you see that these are all spacing's better. In addition to that, I'm going to go back and grab this quote. Sovereignty itself, of course, is not subject to law, for it is the author and source of law, but in our system, while sovereign powers are delegated to the agencies of government, sovereignty itself remains with the people. So the people are sovereign. And I'm going to copy and paste that in there. And then I'm going to go grab um, it is the public policy of this state that public agencies exist to aid in the conduct of the people's business. The people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agents that serve them. So I'm not going to yield my sovereignty to this court. And I'm going to go paste that in there. And now I'm going to highlight this whole thing, change it from to Times New Roman to, to nine point, and then I'm going to look and see why there's this space between these guys. So I'm going to go to Format, Paragraph, and it's on line spacing is single, which is nice and tight. And then you're going to put zero point before and zero point after. OK. And now do you see that they tightened everything up there. You can still read these quotes. And let's, let's just indent them a little bit so that you can tell that they're separate. Okay, and that's how you add uh, footnotes. So I, I add all my case law in as footnotes. M makes it, uh, you know, somebody can read this along. But and if they and if you want to justify what you're doing and why you're doing it, I'm putting all my justification from case law or or statutes and codes in there. And then in this court, I'm going to add a footnote here. Insert footnote. Okay. And I'm going to go look in my sovereignty page again, and I'm going to look for the definition of court, which I happen to know is at the end. So here's the definition from Black's Law. Court, an agency of the sovereign. Well, I've just declared that I'm sovereign. I have a right to declare sovereignty. Created by it, directly or indirectly, under its authority. Consisting of one or more officers. Well, I can be the only officer in my court. Established and maintained for the purpose of hearing and determining issues of law and fact regarding legal rights and alleged violations thereof, and applying the sanctions of the law. Okay, so I'm creating my own court, and I'm showing the definition for court, and I'm going to paste that in there. And then I'm going to change it to highlight it all, run it down the page, and format, oop, I don't want to format, I just want to change it to nine point. And there we go. Oops, it didn't do it. Okay, nine point. Nine point, all right. And there it is, it's in nine point. And it you, you see up above it has changed how many lines are appearing up here. And then we're going to say in this court of record and then I'm going to show what a court of record is by inserting another footnote. Okay and I'm going to go to my sovereignty and I'm going to look for court of record which is here at 16. 
copy, paste. A court of record is a judicial tribunal having attributes and exercising functions independently of the person of the magistrate designated generally to hold it. So in other words, the judge, the magistrate, can't make any final legal determinations. Who does? The judicial tribunal. Who's the judicial tribunal? The one that adjudicates the matter. It's the jury. And proceeding according to the course of common law. Once you start talking common law, there's no statutes and codes. That's it. No legislated act in common law. Okay, so I'm going to change this to nine point. And there you go. You notice that the first line here is higher than the other three. This first number is what's doing that. So I'm going to change that to New Times Roman 11, and you'll see. You can still read the number easily. There's the three. But now the first line's not so much separate. OK. I don't know why this did. Well, yeah, because we're still on nine point. Now uh, need the sheriff's department. Okay. And then the next thing we're gonna do is that's what we did in the first thing is like basically just a, um, the Reader's Digest version of what this is about, where I call that the summary. I didn't call it the summary, but that's what it is. It's a summary. So now we're going to go to put capital I period facts. Highlight it, bold it, center justify it, and return. And then left justify and take the bold off. And now we're going to start listing the facts. So, one, on March 3rd, 2009, <laughs> John Doe was traveling in his privately owned car on the county road J9 let's say 2 now you notice that once you put it in uh, pressed return it went to automatic spacing well I think this is too far indented and I don't like that so I'm going to change the indent up at the top here you have these two little triangles the bottom triangle, I'm going to move this triangle over to um, indented two spaces. And now I'm going to do that. And as you can see, the top triangle is at the um, shaded area, which is the left side of where the printing starts. So the one and the two is going to go right below your printing line. And then the indented part is when the thing starts to be indented. So, and then two on March 3rd, 